This is the Heart of LAFC Podcast, episode 120. The City of Angels is black and gold. You are listening to the Heart of LAFC Podcast. And now, here are your hosts, Jerry Jimenez and Joseph Zacker. What is up? Welcome to the Heart of LAFC Podcast. My name is Jerry Jimenez, your host, your friend. You're insider into the Los Angeles Football Club. Thank you for joining Joseph and I for episode 120 of the Heart of LAFC. Mr. Joseph Sacker, how are you, sir? Good evening, sir. 120. Check that. Another yeah. milestone. Another yeah. one. Just keeps on going. Another. That's awesome. Excited, man. It's uh, It's been a long, long week. We uh, had some information come out almost immediately after we recorded the last episode, so we didn't get to talk about that, which is fine because we had plenty to talk about, which is the Conca Champions. We're going to be facing off against uh, Club León in Guanajuato, Mexico. That's going to be an interesting game, and that should be coming up. Uh, you know, More information should be coming up. We can, we'll catch you up on what's going on with that. I'm sure. Uh, we did a little bit of a breakdown of the club, but I think we're going to do another one once it gets closer oh, yeah. to the game. We're good. Yeah, obviously. We're good. Yeah. Um, and I think that's what in, where was it, February? Yeah, it's either the uh, 18th, 19th, or 20th. I know some people are seeing yeah. a date on there. That's not the date. Okay. Um, possibly this week. Should be probably this week we'll hear about an official date, but those are placeholder dates on the CONCACAF website. They're not official yet. Don't think that's the date. Because it's changed if you've noticed it. So yes. just wait. Just wait for an official announcement or something near an official announcement. It'll, trust me, stuff will start flying because everyone will get their schedules out. Yes. Um, but don't be surprised if we start hearing it this week. So, um, yeah, don't plan your trip according to the current things listed because it will change. It will change, but mm -hmm. we will make sure to keep you updated as far as, yeah. as as much as we can, you know. But, uh, yeah, thank you guys for hanging out again one more time here. So, like we mentioned, we talked about Conca Champions. If you want to hear about that, episode 119. This one, we're going to be talking about a couple of things, a couple of players, new players, mm -hmm. which is awesome. Mm -hmm. We're going to be talking about how LAFC is being rebranded to the Los Angeles of Uruguay Football Club. Uh, and we're also going to be... Uh, you know, actually, really quickly, jump into this real quick. Uh, if you're watching us on YouTube, welcome. If you're not, you should probably head over there right now because what I'm about to mm -hmm. show is on the screen here. This is the phone. Check this out. Carlos Vela with wifey enjoying a beautiful vacation. Here you go. Him and, and uh, his wife there in a, in a couch drinking some wine. It looks like it's somewhere in... In the desert, in Middle East, maybe, possibly, like Egypt or something. Look at them, and they're riding camels. That's pretty <laughs> cool. So I just wanted to say, listen, look, they're enjoying themselves right now, all of our players. So if they can take a break, I feel like we sometimes can take breaks, too. I'm just saying. Diamande, exactly. Diamande as well. Check this out. He just posted a picture today. He's riding a yeah. horse. He's looking, on a horse. Looking hella happy, I may add. And he his, uh, his tag there says, even or I should say his uh, caption says, "Even a smile is a charity." Beautiful. And happiness, then, guys. Happiness. And, and then it's good stuff. Tristan Blackman responds with Photoshop. <laughs> so, <laughs> Doesn't believe him. No. <laughs> good stuff though. But uh, yeah, make no, sure you follow it, our it, club in on social media. It's uh, it's nice to see them having fun. This, I just yeah. wanted to show you guys they're human beings, and it's awesome to see that side of them, uh, especially like with yeah. with Carlos Vela's his family. He has a beautiful family. And uh, well, actually, a few of them do. Uh, also, shout out to the to the Harveys who are expecting, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. and uh, you know the the Beta Shores as well. Beautiful family. Yeah. I, I feel like, you know, you get to know these guys and uh, talk to them, and they're they're regular human beings. Even though sometimes to a lot of us they're also just superheroes. So it's cool to see them like that. Just want to throw that out there real quick. And uh, uh, Brandon, welcome from Australia. He says, I know Simmerman was in Australia recently, so pretty cool. Hmm. There you nice have it. Nice long flight. Yeah. Uh, it's yeah, so no, it, it's, it's, it's good to see the guys cutting things up, taking a break, recharging. Our season starts, let's be honest, way too early. Um, they don't get much yeah. of an off season. So it's a good thing that they get a shot at, at taking a little break here because 
And they're back like on January like 10th or 11th. So not much time off. And they're back into the mix. Yeah. So good for them. Good stuff. And uh, I have to say, I am ready to go. I am pumped up for this episode. We have a lot to talk about, a lot to cover. So we're going to jump right into it. I have to take a quick sip from my uh, big old jug of coffee. And so does Mr. Joseph Sacker. Cheers to everybody. Cheers, cheers. <sighs> okay. Give you a little bit of audio there. <laughs> you ready? Let's do it. Guess what? Changes are coming into the super draft. Did you hear about mm-hmm. that? Yeah, Chicago kills everything. Yep. Uh, MLS announced the date and format changes for a 2020 MLS super draft presented by Adidas. Which, by the way, if it wasn't for the super draft, we may or may not be where we are right now. I just have to throw that out there, right, Joe? Right. If right. We were in Philadelphia. You know, we were Give ruining me. it together Airbnb. give me a reason to go to philly exactly and uh we went to philly it was a great time there in the super draft of 2018 and mm-hmm. a uh you know you came on the show and we eventually decided hey this is awesome you should probably be the co-host and be a part of this a little bit uh more consistent and here we are and this so this Do is a bummer I mean. uh the but i'll get to that in a sec the 2020 super draft will be conducted on january 9th at 9, p, uh, 9 a.m., sorry, Pacific time. And it's streamed live on Twitter by MLS and ESPN. So it'll be easy to uh, watch, just like regular years, or the past years, I should say. Much of the draft remains similar to previous, previous years. There will be four rounds. Each round will have 26 players selected with the addition of Inter-Miami and Nashville this season. So nothing different there. Uh, only the first two rounds are going to take place via live stream on January 9th. Round three and four will take place on the 13th. That usually happens for whatever reason. They do only round one and two on the day of, and then three and four are separate. Which, by the way, just to remind you guys, Peter Levasel came through, I believe, was it round three or round yeah. four? Yeah, about that. So Later rounds, yeah. Yeah. Uh, biggest change to the format, and here it is, location of the draft. Unlike previous years when teams are eligible players and eligible players gathered at one location for the draft, the 2020 Super Draft selection will be made remotely by the clubs. During the first round, MLS will have cameras embedded with players and clubs to show real-time reactions and live looks into the decision-making process. Additional content and analysis will be provided across MLS League and club digital and social channels. What does that mean? Basically, you're not going to be able to actually go and watch this. This is going to be done remotely. What a bummer, man. It's lame. I don't like it. I mean, a lot of people may say, oh, that's the way everything is going. That's cool, but I don't like it. Well, I know one thing that... that probably explains it a bit is for some reason the draft location and the league meetings that happen every year are, in the same place. are not in the same place yeah but they usually yeah. would be and so guys would have to guys working for MLS have to go to the draft and then immediately head out the league meetings that are way apart fly out there from the draft usually ah. to do that and so it was never really linked up Tradition, I guess. Maybe the league meeting should be at a different time. Who knows? Um, and it is an odd year because of the contracts, but still, it's sad to see these chances not happen. Tristan Blackman, when he lift up, lifted up the thirty-two fifty-two uh, scarf, scarf. what did that say? Corporate league boring scarf, saying there's only one team in LA. <laughs> and just seeing Garber's face when it happened, it's, so there's good. something very special there so good. that we're never gonna get again, which is lame. So um, it's also on a supporter side of thing, there's always a ton of supporters that go to the draft. And so it's a great chance for all of us to kind of hang out and, uh, yeah, see what each other's got, right? I mean, everybody's singing for their guys. Is it making a big show? We had a great time. Yeah, Very it was nice. fun. He saw it. He was in the middle of the middle of the press pool there. So um, I got the best view of the 3252 because I was in, the, in yeah, with, the, with press, and I had a direct view of where you guys were at, just making a ton of noise and making everybody – Look bad. Uh, there's a, a few other, you know, hecklers in there in the, in the crowd that were, uh, that was just fun. It was fun is where we're, we're going yeah. with that. But it's that's, that's, it's a bummer. It's sad that it's not going to be there. And it's the first time it's going to happen. Yeah. Uh, let's hope that, that they, you know, realize the, the error of their, their judgment here and their judgment. And yeah, get it back to what it should be. Treat it, treat it like the event that it, that it needs to be. So I agree. Yeah. Yeah. So That's to the uh, to the super draft, I say you are done. You're complete. I 
I will miss you. We're all going to watch you on the internet, but we'll not be, we'll be there in spirit <laughs> because we're going to be forced to be. Ugh, what a bummer, man. That's just how I feel. Like, dang. Fail, fail, fail. Mm-hmm. All right. Yeah. So should we move on to more fun stuff? Let's do it. You want to take this one? I can, I'll let you yeah, take this one. Yeah, I'll do it. Especially since I'm going to have to really like get up on my game with this. So uh, <laughs> LAFC announced the official signing of the first EMLS player in club history, Martin Remy Martin Orihel. Right? I said that right? Yeah. Orihel. I think I said that right. Uh, LAFC announced today the official signing of his first EMLS player in club history. Uh, Remy Martin, as he's known, uh, the, the, the 22 year old joins LAFC after participating in a host of online and live LAFC competitions. Ora gel or ora hell or hell. Ora right? uh, <laughs> Don't call him ora gel. It's ora hell. Right. Not that stuff. Your teeth aren't hurting. It's right. Martin. Um, previously played yeah, for, right. for no Fuchs given esports, which is owned by Leicester city player, Christian Fuchs. Um, Orihel qualified for the 2019 Romania Foot Championship Champions Cup and 2018 FIFA Global Series Playoffs qualifier and was a 2018 Manchester Foot Champions Cup top eight finisher. That's a lot to say right there. The kid's Dude's busy. Good. He's good. Right? Yeah. Uh, the black and gold are the latest addition to EMLS, which includes 25 EML- EMLS competitors each representing different MLS clubs. Often S- Austin FC and Nashville SC will also join EMLS. That's right. That's pretty New cool. New faces, including us. Looks like we have an excellent player to, to start our, our, our journey with this. I think we talked a few episodes ago about, about tournaments and how that's all going to work itself out. Pay attention to this one. It's going to be fun, guys. It is. Um, and I'm sure it's going to inter- inspire a lot of us to get into it as well and have a good time with it. Yes. Um, I know 3252 is even talking about tournaments possibly and getting involved and playing and having a good time together. Um, again, it brings people together. That's what this does. And uh, good for him. He's got our support for sure. Absolutely. Lot, lot and, and we are yeah. going to cover it a little bit. I've decided I made that yeah. decision because yeah. uh, because we are. And uh, Martin Orgel and I have been... Uh, Sending messages back and forth, by the way. I'm a little bummed out because he was going to be coming on the show tonight. We were supposed to have him on live tonight. Going to get an interview with uh, with Remy Martin. Martin, two ends at the I end there, if you want to find him. But uh, he's him. he's on Twitter and, and, and all that good stuff. So go and follow Martin Orgel. But uh, he will be on. He will be on very soon. Uh, he had to take care of some family things. So, uh, yeah, I said, dude, don't worry. Let's have you on later on. No problem. So he uh, has already agreed to it. So now that we're saying it live, now he has to do it. No, yeah. I'm just kidding, Martin. No, but yeah, he's he's going to come on. We're going to talk to him, and he's going to give us a bit more of his background, where he comes from, and all that stuff, which um, is, is, is actually really cool stuff. So, yeah, awesome. Good job, Joseph. Yeah, part, part of the LAC family. <laughs> yeah. That's simple. Absolutely. Yeah. Welcome to the family, brother. Yeah, man. Welcome. So with that, not only did we get a new EMLS player, we got two, count them, not one, two new players to our squad. Uh, really young, interesting players, uh, Joseph. So I'm going to take mm-hmm. the next one, and then you'll take the big one. How about that? Okay. That works for me. All right. <laughs> yeah, we'll go back and forth. Whatever. It doesn't yeah, matter. Yeah, yeah. All good. All good. Yeah, We're all right. Alive. The Los Angeles Football Club announced the signing of Danny Muzovsky. I think we everybody everybody kind of went. What? what? What is Danny Musovsky? Oh. December tenth is when they announced him. Uh, Musovsky is twenty four. Played the two thousand eighteen and two thousand nineteen seasons for the San Jose Earthquake, uh, United Soccer League affiliate. Yeah, not the Earthquakes. All right, uh, there was a little bit of a weird uh, break there for me. Reno, eighteen sixty eight FC. That's where I was gonna go with this. Uh, he scored sixteen goals in forty total games over two years. Uh, originally selected by San Jose with the 30th overall selection in the 2018 MLS Super Draft. There you mm-hmm. have it again, Super Draft. Uh, he was recognized as a USL Player of the Week for Week 28 last season. Musowski finished second on the team in Reno with 11 goals and one assist in 1,244 minutes. So the kid's good. Coming from Super Draft, drafted by San Jose, went down to play for Reno 1868 FC, and is now in LAFC. 
Uh, he is a Henderson, Nevada native. He was a four-year starter and two-time All-American at the University of, ne- of Nevada. That's UNLV. And as a senior in 2000, uh, 2017, he scored 15 goals. 15 goals with six assists. Earning the first team all WAC and WAC Offensive Player of the Year honors. Musovski finished his UNLV career with 47 goals and 23 assists in 88 total appearances. Not bad. Dang. Not bad. Not bad at all. We're all like Musovski. And now it's like, well, hey, Musovski. Previously, he was a Nevada Gator Player of the Year at Liberty High School in Henderson, where he set the state single season record with 58 goals. The dude's a goal scoring machine, apparently. Uh, I mean, you know, looks good. For yeah, yeah, yeah. for what we're probably paying for the dude, to be fair. No, it's going to be a bargain, we, bargain type. Of we play. are, yeah, we're fantastic shoppers, man. Dude, LA, I, thinking about it, when Bob gets one of these prospects, think of Blackman, right? Mm-hmm. He knows how to get the best out of people. Uh, and yep. um, I know you had a couple more things to say about Masovsky, but I can opine. Oh, yeah, Masovsky also played for Las Vegas Mobsters in the UPSL. And mm-hmm. Berlin Game Dragons FC and PDO and FC Tucson USL one, so he has there experience in quite a few different leagues. Uh, maybe getting his way into MLS now, and uh, yeah, good stuff, man. Yeah, I believe he had a four goal game last year. So with Reno, right? Yeah, yeah. Check it out; it's pretty fun to watch. Also, uh, I got some insider stuff on this guy from a couple other people that have watched him play, like. More than a few times. Oh. The guy's the guy is really, really strong on corner kicks to the point where he has no fear. And there's a few videos of him getting absolutely hammered by the goalkeeper because he doesn't let off on the play. He goes in and just sacrifices the body for the sake of the club. He's one of those guys. He also plays a little bit edgy, a little bit mean. So uh sandpaper ah. that we've been missing, ah. kid has a little bit of that. So uh yeah. Uh, we need that. We need somebody hard nosed up there that's a little bit, a little bit angry when he plays. And uh, from what I understood, that Danny Mosowski has that capability, and that he is willing to sacrifice the body. That's a good thing. It's a good thing for us. Great. Thing. Um, wish him all the best. Can't wait to see him in preseason, um, and see what he's got for the club. It's a transition, of course, into MLS, but uh, we're confident that he'll. He'll step up, step up for the boys. Oh yeah, absolutely. No, that sounds that sounds amazing, man. That's actually what we were talking about all season. We need somebody to step up and be physical, right? We, yeah. what basically just counted on you know Diamande, and when he was out, who was really you know the enforcer? Nobody. Nobody, Nobody. Was really, didn't have anybody hard nose like. I that, mean, well, so. a, a couple of times Mark Anthony K would come up and actually defend his you know his teammates, but that was something that was to be expected. Same with Atuesta. Uh, a little bit, but not somebody that would actually body somebody else and actually get in there and just, like you said, sacrifice the body uh, when needed. Yep. So yep. this is good. A uh, forward, though. Interesting. Yeah, but, you know, they're not, they're not always forwards with us. You know how Bob is. He moves guys around as, as yeah. he sees fit, and he, if he sees something in you, that you might become that. So That's a good point. You never know. You never know. But uh, the scoring clip that this kid has, it can – Looks like he, we know what he's going to do. <laughs> yeah, seems pretty obvious. The one note that I don't want to like just kind of fly over is the fact that there's a team in the UPSL that's called the Las Vegas Mobsters. What in the world? Yeah. Can we? It's cool <laughs> logo, too. You got to see it. It's, it's oh, really? hilarious. Oh, cool. Yeah, look it up. It's funny. Oh, man. I can get a kick out of that. Look one. it up right now. All right, cool, man. That's awesome. Well, well welcome to the club, Danny Musovsky, who we none of us knew who the in the world you were. <laughs> Some people did, which is cool. I got that shout out from people like, "Hey, this guy does this, this." I'm like, "Hey, that's perfect because we I need gotta that. Get an education on this kid." Yeah, um, which is good. Which is good. Uh, forces me to learn a bit more about Reno 1868. I mean, I know enough about those guys, but um, yeah, good luck, Danny. We can't wait. Oh yeah, and now that you're going to be moving to Los Angeles, we're rescuing you from Taco Hell. I don't know if you saw the video. No, can we talk about that? Because I did hear about it, but I haven't actually seen it. So oh, tell me oh, all about it, please. Oh, when the, when, the pace, the, when the pace salsa came out and hard shells. Oh, no. I'm just like, Are you serious? Oh, is this prison? Like, oh, no, oh man. We're, we're going we're gonna to save you, kid. Like, you're going to get a proper introduction into tacos. We've got a couple good places near tra- the training center that we'll introduce you to. And we'll get this right. We'll get this right. Danny Musovsky. Por favor, don't listen to anybody that says, go to King Taco. 
No, no. There's <laughs> mucho mejor tacos out there. There's so <laughs> many options, brother. You'll see. You'll see. It'll, it'll, yeah, you're in the right place. And trust me, our uh, boys will send you the right way. So Somebody's going to hate on me. They'll be like, what's wrong with King Taco? There's nothing wrong. I'm just saying there's better tacos out there. That's it. King Taco's there great. Is. Right? Don't get me wrong. People that love King Taco. I love King Taco too, but there is so much better tacos. By the way, yeah. it's not tacos. It's tacos. Say it right. That's the first thing that you have to learn to say, Musovsky. Taco. <laughs> And also at the tailgates, we have better, better yes. tacos. Just saying. Dos tacos de asada tacos, but, y una yeah. cerveza, por favor. That's all you have to learn how to say. Then you're good. All right. You'll we got right you. In. We got you. Nev- Nevada's terrible for Mexican food. So, yeah. Eat. God, pace salsa, dude. That's a... Yeah, then when the pace broke out, you're like, mm, yeah, we're done. You're cut like, off. You're cut off. Everybody. Las Vegas, you're done. Except for Las Vegas mobsters. You guys are cool. All right. They, Name's good. Name's good. It's a great that name, passes. man. Yeah. Burlingame right. Dragons. Let's move into the big ticket. What do you think? Here we I feel go. Like, I feel like we need to do that. But before we do, there's something that I forgot that we needed to touch on really quick before you jump into this player. All right. All right. And that is that I wanted to give a big shout out to everybody that is in California and a part of SB Nation. Uh, I don't know if you saw what's happening, but there is some new, uh, basically, uh, like independent contractor laws that are going through where from my understanding employers now have to supply independent contractors with like some sort of benefits. And a lot mm-hmm. of these employers don't believe that that's fair. And so they're letting go of a large majority of the California independent contractors. Um, SB nation is ran mainly by independent contractors and our very own Angels on Parade is actually being affected by this greatly. And so I wanted to send a quick shout out to everybody that's over there, especially Alicia Rodriguez, who I'm great friends with. She's fantastic. She's amazing. She does pretty much all the work for Angels on Parade. Well, I don't want to say all the work. There's a few people oh, that work with her. She created it. Let's be honest. That's her baby. It's been her baby that's for her baby. going on nine years now, I think. It's like been like eight, eight, nine years. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so I just and I feel was, terrible. It's horrible. Cause she was with us with the other club as well. Yep. Um, yeah. long, long time ago. We've known her for that a long for freaking Nation. time. Doing a fantastic Exactly. Job. And inventing the name and all that stuff. And it's an absolute crime to see what's happening to her right now. It is. Let's be honest. Um, also she is a part of the heart of LAFC family. Yes. She's been on the show. She's co-hosted the show. Um, yeah, dude. It, it's sad to see what's happening here because everybody knows that when there was no traffic, even for LAFC, the early days, she was she was out there putting in work. So, yeah, I mean, we hope we find she finds her way on her feet with this and yes. things go for the better soon. Um, I hope she gets picked up soon because, yeah, she's an she's an awesome talent, a hard worker, and she's a part of the LAFC family. Yeah. And it's because of her that we are able to also do this podcast because she gives us a bunch of information that we wouldn't have otherwise gotten. She does all the groundwork, you know. know um, so, know yeah. So make sure you guys go send her love. Want to send uh, you lots of hugs, Alicia. And I also put a little bug, Joseph, in her ear saying, hey, I have some extra podcast equipment if you have some free time. So I'm trying to get her to do some stuff, uh, f- not just for the our podcast. Hopefully she'll come on soon again. But uh do her own man i think she'd be fantastic i'm It'd just saying awesome. yeah but uh I, she she gives us a bunch of the rumors by the way which we didn't really talk about the fact that uh, uh we were rumored and uh, to be attached with brian lozano from uruguay another uruguayan player there's mario man 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 Mansuchik. man yeah, yeah. We connected to him um uh, kid talking. from leon the uruguayan That's player right. from leon yeah uh uh-huh. just went blank on his name boom um, yeah, he's been linked to us. I think as it's well. Lozano, right? Brian Lozano. Is that who you're talking about? No, it's another kid. It was a couple, actually. Yeah, yeah. It's, for some reason, the Uruguayan pipeline, like now everybody's getting linked to us, mm-hmm. which is perfectly fine because uh, it's been good so far. So I can't complain. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, Lozano was actually, yeah. And then, um, you know, Vince De La Rosa had to come around and be the party pooper and say, hey, that's not true whatsoever. And then when he says it, it basically means you can count on it. It's true. Yeah, when, Vince, true. when Vince says it, that's that. Yeah. He has spoken. He has spoken. 
<laughs> that's it. That's it. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to find that rumor, but uh, yeah, it, there was a player from Leon that's been linked to us. Yeah, which would be really trippy if it happened, because then we have to play him in Champions League. So that would be. I, I don't even. It's weird how that works out, but we end up doing that sort of stuff. Mm-hmm. Have you noticed it? Like, uh, you know, I think I think it happened with like what Christian Ramirez. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, and it's happened with a couple other players, right? Where we bring them in, and then we basically face their, you know, their uh, previous club pretty quickly after they become our players. It's kind of cool how that works out. I like it. it. Like Lee Win. Oh, Lee Win too. Yeah. Right. We got to play him in our next league match. Like, dude. Yep. No rest for Lee, right? Right, he can't have any time away from us. It's messed up, man. man. Yeah, I miss him. What do we have here? What do we got? You want you want to just jump into? Francisco? Yeah, let's do it. Let's do the real news. We'll talk about rumors Bunchy, later because there's some of those down the line. But go, uh, go ahead and take the it. Los Angeles Football Club announced today the signing of midfielder Francisco Ginella from Montevideo, uh, Montevideo Wanderers using targeted allocation money. Uh, the Uruguayan Youth International will join LAFC ahead of the 2020 MLS season and will occupy an international roster spot pending receipt of his international transfer certificate and P1 visa. We know how long those can, can take. Um, Two weeks. And here's a quote. Uh at just 20 years old, Francisco brings us a meaningful amount of experience at the professional and youth international levels, said LAC EVP and general manager John Thorrington. It is exciting for our club to sign a player of his quality and potential, and we are confident Francisco will prove to be a great fit for LAFC as we look ahead to our third season. Janela 20 arrives in Major League Soccer after spending the first three professional seasons with Montevideo Wanderers of the Uruguayan First Division. The 5'10 central midfielder made his professional debut in the team's 3-2 victory over Racing Club on April 15, 2018. In 2019, Janela saw action in 17 matches across all three domestic tournaments and one Copa Sudamericana match. He tallied his first career goal during the first game of the Torneo Intermedio on July 14th before adding his first assist on August 24th. In all, Janela logged 2,341 minutes in 32 matches across all competitions for Wanderers. Internationally, Janela has his national team debut with Uruguay's under-20 side on May 8th, 2018. Since then, he has played in 14 international matches, including three games at last summer's under-20 FIFA World Cup oh, in Poland, in Poland, alongside LFC teammate Brian Rodriguez. Janela is currently training with the under-23 team ahead of the 2020 Conmebol Pre-Olympic Tournament. Dude's good, yeah. by the way. Dude is good. He that is great pass. Good. You, you, I'm, well, I'm sure most of you have seen the video of Rodriguez setting him up uh, for the goal against Norway. Calm, cool, collected. Um, he's not known for being a big goal scorer, but he scores big goals. Figure that one out. Um, yeah, timely stuff. A lot of box-to-box work with this player. A lot of control. A lot of tempo control. Okay? Distribution's really strong with him. He's good at breaking up plays as well. Both sides of the ball. We've got a good one here. He also isn't afraid to get physical. I've seen some conflicting kind of news, but apparently he had like nine yellows last year. That two might... reds. Yeah, two reds. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, what? You mean sandpaper? <laughs> the thing we've been looking for what? forever and ever? Again? A guy that isn't afraid to stick it in? What? What? Yeah, exactly. He's also a dual, he's a dual national. So oh, he's cool. also an, he also has an Italian passport. Oh, we didn't know that. That's where the Janela, right, comes in. Francisco Janela Diabetes. Oh, Diabetes. I'm sorry. Yeah, I almost said that too. And I'm like, oh, Lord. Diabetes. I don't want to. We're not even going to try because I will say diabetes. Uh, (laughs) (laughs) Um, It's a joke, everybody. It's a joke. Yeah. It's funny. Uh, Yeah, central holding and controlling type of midfielder. Uh, We need this, guys, especially with with Lee leaving and honestly depth being needed since we have all these tournaments to now play in. Uh, Open Cup's got a different por- format, so yeah, things are going to be interesting this year. We're going to have a very busy schedule, and we have to build on the depth. That's simple. That's simple. We got we got some movement to make, and man, we're really, 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 really light on midfielders right now. So yes. good move. Good move by the crew. We've got more work to do, though. 
a lot more work. There is a lot more work. But uh, welcome, Francisco Ginella. That's awesome, man. So they call him Pancho. Uh, if you guys know for Francisco's, call him Panchitos, Panchos. I'm going to call him Panchito because he's young. He's 20. Uh, what what a great, man. Two great players. Again, fit the MO of what we all pretty much always look for, right? 24-year-old yeah. Musovsky and 20-year-old uh, Ginella. Good and stuff. I heard this, this kid's on a four-year. Four-year contract, huh? And four-year deal. So Tam money. Not- Tam money, four 2. years. Two point five mil, is what I heard. Yeah. It's a good investment. Yeah. Um, and four years tells me they have confidence in this kid playing, playing for us and building into this lineup and growing with this squad. Uh, before eventually, of course, as they always do, they move on. But that's telling us that at least three years we're going to see him with us. Mm-hmm. That's pretty much what's that what's that saying? At a minimum of three years, unless there's extensions too, you know. Um, yeah. This is strong for us. And again, we're getting younger. If you think of Palacios going to play out on the left, possibly Cisniega being our starter. Um, if Miller is looking. Yeah, Miller's out of contract. Um, Blackman taking the right if we don't get Beta signed. This team's going young, going quick. Mm-hmm. Um, young, speedy, with international experience. Um, all right, this works. This works. Definitely not going to run us off the field. Yeah, the energy is going to be there for 90. So good stuff. Youth movement wins the day. Yeah, we're, it's crazy that we're getting younger. Like I thought we were already at a good point, but yeah, there you go. Yeah. yeah. Amazing. It's well, a risk worth taking. I, I, I agree. I absolutely agree. I think that uh, we need to be looking ahead, and especially with, as we talk about the the Conca Champions also, we have some international, um, you know, a little international flavor being added too, so that's always good. Uh, Brendan asked in our uh, comments here, uh, "What is what's the Open Cup new format? Uh, we will be covering that new format very soon uh, in an upcoming show. Yeah, Actually, it's going to require some debate for sure because yes. it's very controversial. So we need yeah. to, yeah, we need to get into it. It needs its own kind of its own episode because it's uh, it's actually quite a big change for the new format. So and one of them being where MLS teams come into play." within yeah. the within the cup so we'll jump into that i promise brendan uh, we will talk about that specifically uh and then also uh, talking about the the uruguayan connection and lafc of uruguay football club uh that we are building uh fabricio is asking uh Peñero friendly in january i think that's I've been hearing. yeah our, our own rumor. boy benjamin verhen uh Threw that one out on Twitter. That's right. So I mean, yeah. if you guys know, so, uh, if you guys you know Ben from the heart of LAOC boys, if you guys know <laughs> Ben, he would not just throw something out there that he doesn't uh, have some sort of confirmation on. So you can bet that there's something, some truth in that. Maybe you know, hopefully, confirmation, official confirmation coming soon. Right. But right. Uh, but yeah, the, con- the, the, the I guess it was we're playing them, and then they're going to play Seattle down here as well. Oh, that's cool. The, that's the running line. It's coming around. So, dude, I'd love to see Panadol play. I mean, we have this budding relationship with this club, and, and we've seen some two great players come out of this. Yes. Um, this is a great team to build with. Absolutely. Yeah. Brian and, news. and Diego both coming from Panadol. I need myself a Panadol jersey, too, so I hope they do come dude, down. Black and yellow stripes. It's beautiful. Yeah, the, the, the one from last season is the one that I really enjoy. The newest one is like, all right, but... Uh, Good stuff. Oh, here it is. The the rumored player that I t- was talking about for the from uh, Leon is uh, JJ Macias. Ah, uh, yes, JJ Macias. I think you uh, mentioned who him on I the last believe, episode. Yes, he just signed on back on to Chivas actually. Uh, he left. He went there. Okay. Well, he was on loan, I believe, from mm-hmm. Chivas to Leon, and he went back. There it is. Back to the parent club. Yeah. Yeah. The other rumor was we were taking a bid at him. We were taking a a run. Yeah, and so. I think there was some truth to that, except for we just, you know, he the Chivas did better. And apparently Chivas is Guadalajara is reinforcing themselves They're like building crazy. Up. Yeah. So yeah. W- with uh, you know, just a couple of changes within the club, man, it's crazy what what could happen. And just like we've bit out people, it sounds like Macias, you know, was taken from us at, at some point. But I don't know if there's any truth to that. I'm just going to say that maybe I don't know. All right. <laughs> Uh, well, I mean, if you, if you put an interest, you put an interest. That's enough for a rumor, right? Yeah. 
kick the tires, get a rumor. That's... It, yeah, it, it, it's it's just cool to be a part of those types of conversations where now people are actually using LAFC as, oh, this player is attached to LAFC. And it's even sometimes like the agents, you know, that are trying to throw something out there to see if another club will stick and actually, you know, I don't know, race the offers or whatever it is. But there's, I mean, it's, it's you know, the way that, now players come and go within within clubs, uh, you know. It, it's cool to be in that conversation. Just even if it's not true, it's pretty cool to uh, to see that. So yeah, I mean, I think pretty sure the DeRossi rumors last year were something built up by an agent to get his price Absolutely. up. Absolutely. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's where that was at. I don't think that was us jumping on it. Um, you know, we're, rumors we're ta- are rumors, man. It happens. Yeah, we're talking about yeah. like some some Liga MX players, some big names from Liga MX coming over to to our league now, and really making a difference. You had you know people like Gustavo Bo who who's come over. You've had people um, like uh, the Brian Fernand. Well, he actually that wasn't too great, uh, but there was uh, you know a few other players, and now you have somebody like Alan Pulido going to SKC. Man, like, what is going on over there? People are choosing to come to play for MLS. Pretty crazy stuff. And uh, it just, it's fun. It's a good time to be an MLS supporter, other than the fact that uh, this is uh, still a business and you see stuff like Charlotte. Brendan brought it up, so I wonder. We did kind of talk about this before, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. you know, and I know we're kind of going off the rails here, but we're almost at what we wanted to talk about. So we'll talk about this. 325 reported, um, $325 million fee. For Charlotte to join MLS. First of all, why? Why, Charlotte? Second of all, money. Why $325 <laughs> million? Third of all, totally the money. No, absolutely, dude. You're right. It's, uh, it's the money. It's a bummer. But, uh, you know, I, it's... But it's also a business. As as somebody who's had experience with, with leagues folding, I know back in the day, NASL overexpanded itself to death. It's, of course, a di- very different mindset because of the fees now. You know, that's yeah. what keeps this working. Back in the day, it just expanded to expand. New product, maybe it'll sell. Uh, but yeah. now the money's there. And it's become a racket, of course, that, that you keep the league afloat by throwing out more expansion fees. But you got to wonder, when does that end? And when does it become a point where half, half of the fans in the league don't even know who the heck all the teams are? Because it just keeps building and building and building. Um, and yep. What bothers me most at this point is the fact that you're not going to play every team in the league. So something like a supporter's shield loses a ton of credibility because you're not playing all of the teams. So how do we get a true measure if you haven't played everybody? That's a great point. It's lost. It's, yeah. it's, it loses luster by doing something like this. And you, you can't help but wonder, if they keep expanding like this, are we going to get like an MLS West and MLS East and they're going to do their own thing and only meet in the playoffs? Like, when, do, when is it enough? You know. And then, of course, games being played. Currently, EPL plays more games than we do. So we could have expanded more games to accommodate for this. Why not? It's kind of strange. It's strange to me. You need to play everybody. And, yeah, getting to 40 teams, because it seems like if this place, eventually they'll hit 40. <laughs> it's kind of crazy. Oh, here's here's something really cool that happens once in a while. And that is when Joseph, by the way, cannot read your guys' comments. Only I can. And as you said that, Joe, oh, Brendan said, I can see it getting to 40 teams. Yeah, then, you, just, you get the sense that's what's going on. Splitting to two divisions of 20 in each division. So We're going to be like Major League Baseball, right? American and National Leagues? Like, yeah. Are we going that way for travel purposes? Is that what, what we're at here? Well, I mean, it feels like it. USL right now is, I think, either 17, 18 teams per division. Mm-hmm. Um, and so it's possible, you know, and they're well, still I, adding more and more teams. To that, but also, yeah. but also, one of the things that has been talked about within USL is uh, the very strong possibility of actually having uh, relegation and promotion uh, within USL, from USL Championship to USL One, USL Two, so on and so forth. So, I mean, I don't know if that's even a possibility for MLS. Are they getting ready for something like that? No, probably not. I think it's more of the money no. thing. It's the money, but you know, yeah, I, I could see it splitting into two. Uh, yeah. For the sake of 
travel purposes. It was just, I think it would stink that we wouldn't see like New York play against us unless it was either in the open cup or in playoffs and something's lost there. Yeah, absolutely. I and agree. I know FIFA, they prefer leagues to have 18 teams home and home. Like they've, they've mentioned that before. It's like a standard out there. That's why the Bundesliga plays with what it plays with. Um, seems a lot smaller, right? Cause EPL plays with more, but Whatever, uh, you know, it, they're going to do what they think they need to do to survive. It's just how much, how much more diluted do you want to make it? And, of course, the talent pool isn't getting that stronger as of late domestically. So who's playing in this league, right? It dilutes the quality as well when you do this. Unless you keep buying from outside. So, yeah. yeah. All righty. Well, let, how about we end on, the, on high notes? All right. Yes. Yes. 3252 just had a toy drive, sir. Can you tell us, how did it go? Uh, so we went to uh, La Chuparia in Chuparia. Alhambra, the new location that hasn't quite opened yet, but is opening very soon. Um, outstanding location. They picked a great spot. Definitely going to be a viewing party location. Pretty sure Black Army's already going to probably announce the first, uh, the first viewing party there. I think that's kind of a given. Um Awesome location. Donated the location to us for the day, even though they're still building on uh, for the good cause. Basically, um, we did both a toy drive and a sandwich drive, uh, benefiting athletes in the making. A ton of toys. Like you saw, there was a mountain of toys came out. Um, a whole assembly line of, of sandwich makers were on hand as well from pretty much every group in a 3252. Um Especially the groups, council groups, but basically at least I saw at least 12 different group banners there, like d different group representations there. Um, putting in work, donating for the cause, either your time, sandwiches, toys. But oh, and shout out to uh, Adidas LA as well, who donated about 20 MLS balls um, for it as well to give to the kids. Yeah, replica That's awesome. mask balls. Check that out. Super right? cool. Um, Dude, it, it, again, it, this I go to a lot of charity events, and we've had we've had toy drives before. This one to me just felt the most inspiring I've seen yet for our toy drives because of of how tight everyone is within the thirty two fifty two. How the families are there. The kids had their own table to set up sandwiches. They were building sandwiches. Like that's awesome, man. It was, yeah, the Christmas spirit was definitely uh, in tow and, and beyond happy. And we're thankful for everyone that's donated their time and money to this. It got, it's the biggest we've had yet. And I'm sure next year we're going to get even bigger. So thank you to all of you for your, for your generosity to make it happen. Yeah. It was outstanding. Awesome. Yeah. I'm so happy to hear that, man. And, and you know what? Let's keep the good vibes rolling because mm -hmm. guess what? There's another event coming and this one's coming up uh next year i believe yeah um, very but, soon but we're getting mm -hmm. ready for it and uh i say we but i'm not doing anything uh, i'm just helping promote <laughs> joseph uh calling all artists the 3252 yes. is putting together uh again their an annual charity art show that's coming up there we go i've got the image mm -hmm. up here and so they need artists so calling all artists, even if you don't uh, feel like you're an artist, maybe you can try to help out in some way and create some art. Uh, you know, oh, yeah, that's good stuff from Save the Pandas over there. So he's, yeah. uh, you know, helped out before. Mm -hmm. A few other artists mm -hmm. around town that uh, donate some amazing stuff. So even if you're not an artist, definitely try to make it out to this and, and buy some art. Go and check it out. Yeah. So last year we took over City of Angels Boxing, uh, downtown L.A. Uh, took over the entire boxing uh, boxing gym. Took the punching bags down for the most part to fit all the artwork and basically lined it up according to that. It was absolutely packed. Great time. All nice. the artwork sold. Again, Athletes in the Making was the beneficiary to this. In case you're wondering what Athletes in the Making is, basically Athletes in the Making uh, provides uh, sports equipment, registration fees, Basically, if they if they sponsor a child and the child wants to play a certain sport, they hook them up with the equipment, help them get into the league, get them playing. Absolutely free. Nice. They also work with LA Unified um, and offer PE courses for students. And so what they'll do is they'll go to a school, 
they'll offer training in this one sport, and every class gets a shot at learning a new sport. And they cover the equipment and do it. And so it's keeping kids active in the city, those that need it most, in, in, in neighborhoods that need it most. Um, it is yeah. truly targeted. It is truly amazing. Um, check out Vic. Vic is the man that runs the show with his family. They're so cool. Um, but look up Athletes in the Making. See what they do. Um, no hesitation. Uh, they, they are absolutely brilliant with what they do. And so it looks like we're b- going to be heading back to the same location. That's what it's sounding like. I see boxing gloves. It must be. Um, yeah. Yeah, this would be the, about the third time we're going to be at that gym. Um, and of course, Black Army used to be the host for this. Um, we've passed it off for the big picture for the family and now it's all of us that organizing it the entire 3252 so the whole family's involved yeah definitely an awesome event some amazing artists who will do some great pieces i'm sure uh, i'm hoping i can do something for this and uh so we'll see jerry has before he's a great artist he puts up some great work yeah i, I try i try i do my best uh but hey it's for a fantastic cause so like i said if you guys even don't feel like you're artists, it, go and make sure you go to this event. Start putting it on your calendar now. Like, I'm going to go. Just just put it every single weekend from now until, like, all of next year just to make sure that you can make it to the show. It's going to be awesome. Uh, no, well, I'm sure that more information on that will come very, very soon. Uh, it's fantastic. Uh, make sure you email bagivesback at gmail.com uh, for more information mm-hmm. and so that you can mm-hmm. get signed up for that. Um, and, uh, yeah, B a gives back at gmail.com B a like black army B a gives back at gmail.com. All right. And if you're, if you're wondering what kind of, what kind of art is accepted, I'll say any. Okay. Um, we've had, we've had amazing art come in before we, you have paintings, you have sculptures, you have photography, you have amazing, amazing photos coming in. We've seen skateboard decks come through. We've seen neon come through. Oh wow! Whatever, whatever your 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 talent is, whatever you want to provide, it's it's art of all mediums, right? That's yes. what's accepted in these. And there will be a theme. That's why I want you to 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 email BA gives back, so you get the theme proper, and then you can get started and get inspired, and and you'll have some time to get this ready because it's not like we're gonna just gonna kick it off in three weeks. No, it's gonna be a while before it goes. But we gotta give you time to to put in the work for sure, for sure. Yes. Yeah. Awesome. So there you have it. 3252 doing the thing. Uh, and they, geez, you guys, I just cannot tell you how uh, proud I am of w- all the work that you guys are doing over there. It is fantastic. Giving back to the community with this toy drive. Uh, now with the, the, you know, annual charity event and, and all the events that you guys do throughout the years. Cause that's what it's about right there. It's the community mm-hmm. and uh, what you guys are building together. It's, it's, it's a beautiful thing. So, Again, if you're and, listening, make sure you get yourself involved. Okay. I I like it. Yeah, and I'll give a shout out to Christian Torres, who is our uh, community outreach director for 3252. Who's shout out. Who's basically the man putting in the work to make sure that we get these charity events off the ground, uh, making sure things are coordinated, and, and getting our name out there, getting the work out there, so so we can get to do these amazing events. Very cool. All right, man. That's it. That's it for us. Episode 120. Is there anything else you want to add? We're out of time. Uh. Get ready this week. There should be some more announcements coming down the line. I know there's some free agents that we all saw the list popped up. Oh, um, oh yeah. That's you true. never know. We could be signing somebody on that list. We have two familiar faces that we know very well in the family that are on that list right now. Hey, hopefully for the right place, we'll see him back this year. Yeah. We'll see what happens. And, uh, hey, I think we could say this. Is there a wish list we might want to throw out? Let's challenge everybody. What's their wish list? Realistically, oh. what they want to see coming in. Yeah, because uh, yeah, we want we want to hear from you guys on that one for our next episode. Is is uh, in the Christmas mood, right? What what would you want under the tree uh, for LAFC? What would you ask Santa for? Well, as far exactly. as LAFC goes, player wise, exactly. So yeah. let's let's hear it. Let's hear what what we're gonna see under the tree. Is it gonna be the big car with the bow, or the big striker with a bow, or oh. a veteran goalkeeper with a bow? You tell us what you think. Ooh, I and, like that. Uh, throw out some rumors out there because that's some fun stuff right there. Yeah, let's let's have fun with this one. That's cool, man. I'm gonna I'm actually gonna put that out there on Twitter tonight. Let's see what let's see what comes out of it. Um, 
and then you can help us. Yep. For those of you that are listening, make sure you hit us up on Twitter. And uh, actually, I'll do it on Instagram too. Why not? We'll do all social media. Give us your uh, your wish list, your your Christmas wish from Santa. What do you want for LAFC? What, like you said, a striker, a goalkeeper. What do you want? What do you want? And if you want to give us specifics too, let's do that. A gold YouTube on the jersey. I mean, anything, anything. It's wide open, guys. Oh, okay. All right. Well, let's open it up wide. Damn, that's a good one, dude. Hey. E. I never let up on that, do I? <laughs> <laughs> As you shouldn't, and Rich would not expect would expect uh you would expect not no no less from you. <laughs> I can't even spoke, which means it is our time to say goodbye. Oh man, it's been a it's been a rough uh, few days. I'm like still getting over a cop. I'm sure you guys can tell my voice is kind of like Egh. still still man. I don't know what is up with this weather. By the way, dude, it's 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 cold up here. It's cold, man. Like. Snow on the it's mountain, cold. It's cold over so, here too, man. It's cold everywhere. I hate it. Nah, dude, I, I love the weather. I just, you know, everybody get their skiing and snowboarding in, and I'll get my kids with their sledding. We just need a little bit more out there to make it even more fun. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So we're going to do our best. I'm not going to promise anything, but we are going to do our best to do a show on the 23rd coming up before Christmas Eve, uh, and then again on the 30th, so right before New Year. So we are going to try. But I don't want to promise anything. If something comes up and we can't make it, I apologize. But just be put it in your time in your uh in your time in your calendar, the twenty third Monday and the thirtieth Monday. We're gonna do our best to be here for you guys live. So make sure you join us. We're gonna have some more stuff coming. Hopefully we'll have uh Martin uh Orehel from uh EMLS joining us as well next week, maybe. Yeah, we'll yep. see. We'll see if we can make it. Uh, but uh, that's it. That's going to do it for us. Episode 120 in the books. Joseph, thank you so much, man. Appreciate you, dude. Hey, always, brother. It's, it's again, guys, it's a blast doing this for everybody. Um, I know we're, we're getting close to the end of the year here, but uh, again, thank you, everybody, for checking in with us. And again, shout out to Alicia. We're thinking of you. Yeah, we love you, Alicia. And I still think you need to come on the podcast. Uh, we just haven't been able to make it happen. That's my fault, not hers. All right. So, for Mr. Joseph Sacker, my name is Jerry Jimenez, and you have been listening to the heart of LAFC podcast. Stay golden. Thank you for listening to the heart of LAFC. Make sure to leave us a rating and review on iTunes or Stitcher. Shoulder to shoulder, the black and gold is taking over.